All right. So we are here with Lanisa James to do a copy talk titled, Make Your Homeschool Mom Life Work For You. Get your coffee. Yes. I've almost finished mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Lanisa, I'm very familiar with your story and um, work with you on other projects, but I, I'm guessing most of our um, audience members are don't know. So let's start by you telling us something about your homeschool journey. Thank you, Dr. Cheryl. Well, yes, and we've connected on so many different levels, but I'm excited to just be a part of the great work you guys are doing right here um, for the Black and Brown homeschoolers. It's such a big deal. And so I guess I'm past my 15 year mark of homeschooling. Yeah. I'm a wife and a mother of seven. So I homeschool seven different children and you guys heard that number right. The oldest is 23 and the youngest is five. So I have one who's just, Dr. Cheryl, she is just on the bus. Like she's starting again, okay? Yes. Like I started over, right? Yes. Oh and so many in between. So my oldest daughter uh, just graduated college. She just took the LSAT. Okay. And my second daughter just finished her freshman year in college. So she's a rising sophomore. And then I have a ton of high schoolers. You know, when you have more than one high schooler, call it a friend. So yes. I have um, uh, a, a high school, LaKayla, Lorenzo, and then I have an eighth grader. Then I have a middle uh, uh, elementary school student. Then I have my uh, my kindergartner. Right, right. Kids, but you know, I think what's unique about my homeschool journey in the beginning, I describe myself as the reluctant to leader homeschooler. Mm -hmm. I did my undergrad at a major university in three short years. So when I started homeschooling because of a what I call a deal breaker, a situation that happened in private school mm -hmm. that. It made me start looking. I was looking with the whole mindset of these are college bound students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, people start their journeys in different ways. So in my brain, I'm always thinking, what do I need to do? I want to keep it fun. I want to keep them engaged. I want them to love education, but understand that higher education has always been our goal. That's right. And it's, I, I want to go back to what you said. It was a private school that that caused you to an incident at a private school because we often think it's the public schools but it's not just public schools it is private schools too that can yes. not meet your students needs and that you're paying the tuition so how much more you know that you need to just get in there and do it yourself which is amazing yes, yes. Um, my husband said we went from spending over twenty thousand dollars in education to five hundred dollars in books and he's in law enforcement oh, so wow. One question was, is this legal? Like, what's going on? Is this legal? I think sometimes when you start homeschooling, you can't believe that this is something you can do that works for you. So that's true. That's true. <laughs> wow. So what do you think are the biggest challenges that you've experienced as a home educator? And now you're a homeschool leader. You should talk a little bit about you know what you do too, because you're a leader of um two groups, if I remember correctly, right? Yes. And other things. Yes. So talk a little bit about that too. And then lead into the challenges that you see. Sure. So yeah, uh, so what happens is when I started homeschooling, um, one of the first challenges was finding groups where people look like me. You know, my kids were really lonely. In fact, it was a charge for my children that made me thrust myself into leadership and homeschooling. I was always already a leader in business, but I had never considered being a leader in homeschooling. But my kids said, mom, we have no friends. We have no friends, you know? Like there's parties being planned that we're not invited to and things that happen after class. And I, my heart was heavy for them. And so I thought, well, you know, at the same time that, you know, my heart was pricked. My pastor's heart was pricked at the church and he wanted a ministry. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll be happy to start one because I want my kids to have some friends. And so mm -hmm. started off with just a few people. And here we are 10 years later, Dr. Cheryl, 10 yeah. years later, thousands of students later, we average about 200 students per year in our program. And in our state, you know, there's an oversight requirement where you have to have a portfolio review. So we stand in a gap for those uh, families who allow us to assist with their homeschooling. But then we also have a cooperative group and a, and a classical tutorial group. And by the time we're out of the house on Monday and out of the house on Wednesday, we're happy to be home Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. <laughs> We will have seen a lot of people, you know what I mean, between those two days. And so that takes that whole loneliness away. But one of the biggest challenges 
is that um, you have to have some order, some sort of, you, you have to have a strategy. If not, you burn out, you know? They say you burn out before you catch fire. You burn out. And so that what I would say is the second challenge is, you know, that whole loneliness piece and then overcoming the burnout and homeschooling. And that's where the whole mom's manual came into play. Okay. The second group that you're talking about, Dr. Cheryl, is the Black Homeschool Co-op, which I'm really excited to have the um, distinct pleasure to be one of their main administrators. And, you know, we're well into the thousands of um, families. A lot of them are new homeschoolers. And so they don't understand what homeschooling is. And so I have just, you know, made my life transparent enough and given them enough information so that they too can make decisions about how they're going to keep this bridge going. And so it's exciting. Yes. So you mentioned your mom's manual. That's your latest book, right? Your yes. new book. And um, so what do you want homeschool families to gain from the mom's manual? I want them to gain a strategy. I think I see too many mothers, just like, you know, my mother was a single mom. So whether you're a single mom, whether you're uh, married, whether you're working full-time, working part-time or at home, we all come across the same thing, which is how am I gonna manage all this? I mean, let's face it. If you're new to homeschooling, you've gone from just kind of working with what the teacher sent you at home to now you're the, you're the main kahoot, right? You're the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that is intimidating. It's overwhelming. And so that was one of the things that I wanted to do. This is kind of the mom's man is my gift to the world. People say, Lenissa, how do you do it? You got seven kids. You, 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 you're a leader of a group. You're a business leader in the community. Like, how do you all do it? And I always say, get my mom's manual. Because once we get the stress of life onto paper and out of your head, it relieves anxiety, it relieves stress, mm -hmm. it gives you a how-to. Most of what happens in my life happens before the sun comes up or before the kids get up, I should say. I'm in my mom's menu. I don't know about y'all house, but when everybody get up, things get crazy. Like you better, mama, you better already have a plan, okay? <laughs> you're not, you might not get a shower if you, if you stay at home with them or if you're at work, you know, things might not be in order. Now, I don't want to confuse the person who's not into a whole lot of order. I don't mean that everything has to be neat and, and, and organized. I'm talking about functioning, like <laughs> operational, right? You know, like you need an academic planner. What will you do in, in math, science, English? And one of my secret sauces to pulling all this together is that we always keep a binder. Mm -hmm. Every year, my curriculum is picked and everything goes in a binder. In our home, it either goes into that binder or goes into file 13, which is the trash. Because mm -hmm. when you still, because I have two out of the house, but I still have five at home. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of kids that you're homeschooling, you can't manage all that. So I kind of have a strategy to say, hey, is this something that I want to keep? to keep in my portfolio, what's this just a fun project for the day? And it, you know, goes on the refrigerator until, until trash day comes, you know? <laughs> so the mom's manual will help you with all that from planning your meals. Cause it's hard to teach, teach children in education when they're hungry. <laughs> You're right. That's real talk. My kids unravel. Do your kids unravel? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They yes. must be fed. <laughs> yes, food, clothing, shelter. That's, That's right. the foundation. That's right. So it, it deals with all of those pieces to help a mom kind of put a strategy together, her goals, mm -hmm. you know, her affirmation. How are you going to encourage yourself? Mm -hmm. oh, because it can be lonely, right? You may be the only person on your block homeschooling. Right? <laughs> right? I, that's how I started. Right. For a while, you know, I've been a... Um, a businesswoman who worked from home for, for almost three decades, but I've always been the only one home. Mm -hmm. so I always had to have a strategy to encourage myself. It wasn't that I had this big kumbaya outside my home. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> so, you know, it, so the mom manual opens up with your goals and I always tell people go as far as you can see in terms of goal mm -hmm. setting. And when you get there, you'll see more. Okay. You'll learn how maybe you only have one goal. It's like, if I could get Johnny, to you know, stop failing science and maybe love it for a change. Yeah. You know, put that down. Like mm -hmm. whatever the goal is, you know. And then all of a sudden, you find this experiment that makes his eyes pop, and all of a sudden, you're like, "Wow, I've, I've reached a goal!" Like he actually enjoyed science today. Mm -hmm. It could be simple, and then you can build it into whatever it needs to be for your life. 
but yeah, I, I love that there's a place for you to write it now. <laughs> yeah. um, so can you talk about the 90 day plan? We're not gonna give all your secrets away in your book. We want people to buy the book, but um, what successes have you had working through a 90 day plan? Yeah, I find people get overwhelmed when I say the whole year. Mm -hmm. right? I can say the whole academic year, and then we're talking about 10 months. You know, people are like, oh my gosh, I can't figure out what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't know what I'm doing the next hour. <laughs> you take 90 days. 90 days is behavior changing. Okay. 90 days, you know, they say 21 days to create a habit, but if you do something for 90 days, you've made a habit out yeah. of it. Um, so if you will just take 90 days, you know, in this case, um, July, August, and September, you know, I had my June, July, August together. So I knew what I was doing the whole summer. It's all written. And guess what? There's so many changes that come along the way, mm -hmm. but at least you have a plan. At least you have a place to dump your brain. And one of my hot tips in my book is that we teach you how to brain dump in categories because life is like a whole bunch of windows open at the same time. It's kind of like your computer right now, right? You were working on this and you left that window open and you're working on that. How did you know? <laughs> right? And you got all these windows open. You got Word open, you got the PowerPoint open, you got this open. And a confused mind does nothing. Mm -hmm. It breaks down. You know, and that's where we find ourselves. And, and if I can offer something to the world will, where people will be encouraged to attempt to homeschooling, to make it through the year, to make it through the second year, to have something, maybe you put it down and pick it back up, but that you have something that says, hey, this was my plan. And when we add the complexity of those who are not supporting homeschool and they begin to question your homeschool <laughs> and you know, plan that makes you feel even more insecure doesn't it so this could be like hey yeah I, we're out playing on the trampoline today but you know here's our strategy for the week and this is their free time you know and you can kind of rest in that so yeah. it's strategy it's an organizational strategy that's really good sounds good um so what are your what are your favorite academic strategies to helping families thrive yeah. Well, one of them I mentioned about the binder, because mm -hmm. academically, if you will get clear as to what your child needs and put the big rocks in first, mm -hmm. right? you mm -hmm. know, he was failing science and I'm here to change that. Or he needs extra help in math. And, you know, I want to put math in, you know, those kinds of things, figure out what kind of uh, tools you want to use for those areas that were problem you know, problematic before you came into homeschooling. And then it's easier to add the other things around, right? And so that's a strategy. And then my notebook strategy is just my favorite. It really is because I get busy, you get busy. We all get busy. Right. So what I love, so whether it's summer enrichment or if it's in the school year and maybe we've gotten off track for a day or two or we've chose to do a field trip or do something different. When we get back on the track, that binder puts us back on you know, back in process. You know, it's not like you're trying to recreate. Um, my life is too busy to recreate all year long. I can't do 10 months of recreating. Right. right. Uh, you know, so if there's a strategy there, decide what you're going to do in the beginning and you can add enrichment enhancement to it, but figure out what works. Use your summer to, to kind of play on some curriculums, look at them, get close to them, you know, ask a friend to let, let you see the curriculum or, you know, push the publisher to let you see more and get a sample of it so that when the year starts, that could be behind you in terms of what I'm going to do right. you know, with my child. And it sounds like even though you're making that plan that you give space for um, families to be spontaneous as well, because yes. you can get back on your plan, which means that gives you permission to kind of get off of it sometimes. Because sometimes yeah. an opportunity will come up, right? And so just because you've taken this time to plan something doesn't mean you have to stick to that plan. You, That's right. You have to be guided by you know, your spirit, by your, by your children's interest, and then what's available in your community sometimes, right? Yes, because things come up, good things come up that you don't even know that's coming up. And I'm a 
big fan of teaching my children history live. You know, um, we happen to be owners of a black owned beach. We've been featured in the African American Museum of History and Culture. And so a lot of our history is taught live, you know, for many, many years, they would just have what we call sit down, you know, with their great grandmother. And I said, I don't know what the topic is. I don't know what she's going to say, but it's going to be something you're going to need to know. And if you don't think it's valuable today, keep living and you'll it'll have value as you go on. Absolutely. And so people what subject is this? I was like, call it history. Kids are planting up a little strawberry garden. Where are they supposed to be? They just planting. I said, call it botany. So a lot of what I call eclectic unschooling can be incorporated, especially because you have a plan. So you're not always so worried about they're not doing what they needed to do. You can kind of rear off because you have a plan. So I love to be eclectic in my homeschooling. In fact, every December and the end of April, we are eclectic, we shut it down. And we're, in, you know, we're, we've done the school work, you know, September, October, November, we, you know, we, we're eclectic for December and then we come back January, February, March, April. And then we're eclectic for May, June, July, August until we started all over again. Yeah. But you hear it's a plan, you know, so we have lots of off days and lots of fun stuff, but it's strategic. That's really good, that's so good. So earlier you mentioned this too, but I wanna really get this in for our listeners. We don't have to be the kind of people who have everything in order, in order to do your mom's plan, right? In order to follow it. So like right now it's okay that my laundry is overfilling. I have dishes <laughs> in the sink, but I can still be an organized homeschooler. Talk to me about that. Let's, cause I know there's moms out there that are like, what, how do I get this organized when my house isn't organized? Right. right. <laughs> right. We call it organized chaos. Okay. Right. When you have nine people with a James fa family of nine, with a James party of nine every day, 365 days of the year, right? Mm -hmm. We have to feed them three meals and three snacks. And if they stay up too late, we have to feed them again. I mean, you can't organize that. Okay. <laughs> Things are going to get out of control and that is okay. What you're organizing, I would like to say is really your mindset right? So things are always chaotic. If I flip this camera around, you'd be like, "Woo!" <laughs> okay. Me too. <laughs> That's normal. That's normal. Why? Because we're in our homes now. Be, I want you to be careful because if you were not homeschooling before, I want you to know now you're in your home. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm very much a tackling the laundry kind of gal. You got to follow me so you can learn how I do that. But people are wearing clothes every day. People are eating out of dishes every moment, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do? So, so it's never going to always be this, you know, Brady Bunch, everybody's clean kind of house. It just, that, let it go. <laughs> okay. Let it go. Let it go. And, and figure out for the moment what needs to be in order. You know, what, what needs to be in order? Maybe you're working on a family project. Like my son, I wanted him, he's a high school student. He's a rising sophomore. I wanted him to have a construction management credit and work on some projects around the house. Well, he laid the entire floor, thanks to Home Depot, right? And the DIY videos oh, in wow. the family room. And I wanted him to have these projects. So he's been working on these projects. And, you know, I work with the online community to help me with a curriculum. So he had some written parts of what it takes, you know, to get permits and do, you know, projects. And then he had the floor. He had, so it was just so exciting. So, you know, so you want to be able to live your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and homeschooling because homeschooling is just part of your life. That's right. it's not just the, you know, the traditional subjects like, you know, math, science, read, you know, mm -hmm. it's other things that they learn, right? Mm -hmm. Like somebody need to learn how to do the dishes, right? That's home ec. Give it a title. <laughs> somebody needs to be a master chef in here and it does not have to be mama. It to be mama. Yes. <laughs> Why don't we teach somebody how to cook and, and free ourselves up? But if you, you can't delegate if you don't have a strategy. It's hard to give your job away what to do right I can't ask you to do something if I don't know what needs to be done that's right that's a good point yeah well is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners well I think the only thing I want to share is uh, is to be encouraged about homeschooling this is a very pivotal year I think coming from our pandemic which is kind of still there but better but we we all know that it's still there and we're trying to get to the other side 
this is a pivotal year for everybody in homeschooling. Whether you've already been homeschooling, uh, you were new to homeschooling, give yourself a chance, get some new strategies in place so that you can continue on. Write your bug list so that you can figure out, hey, this is, this is what was bothering me in my homeschool. Mm -hmm. so, this is the part that was bothering me. If I could fix this, then I can continue on. And please don't judge 2020 on homeschooling. 2020 was not homeschooling. That was pandemic schooling for us all. Right, right. Right, wasn't it? That was, a, we were in a pandemic. Nobody could go anywhere. Now you're gonna get a chance to move about the cabin a little bit and to really start enjoying some homeschooling. So I really believe at this point, Dr. Cheryl, Anybody who was in it this year needs to do another year to figure out if this is going to work for you. And when all else fails, be like me, be reluctant in your homeschooling, take it year to year to year, and things will show up as the further and further you go. Wow, that's great advice. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And where can they find your book? Oh, Amazon. I have a picture of it. It's a really, really pretty, pretty book, you know, like something that will inspire you, right? All right. colors. 264 pages of color for your 90 day planning, Amazon. So if you just Google moms with an S, mom's manual and Lanissa James, it'll pop right up. I hope you do get a copy. And hey, I even have a Facebook community that you can join me so you can see how I'm doing it. We can compare, we can talk and we can engage. I wish you all the very, very best. All right, thank you so much. Bye for now.